It's about 27 here in central Florida and pretty windy so it's a good day to do some upgrades and maintenance on your T-Rex 500. Uh, today what I'm going to do is put a set of Boca ceramic hybrid orange seal bearings into my Scorpion 3026-1600 motor here in my T-Rex 500. So I've got the bearings here, got my tools all lined up ready to roll and the helicopter's all ready to go. So I'm going to kind of go through it step by step and show you how I change the bearings out on the Here's the top of the motor. You can see it's pretty icky looking. And this is from all the oil that you have to drop in with the stock bearings uh, to keep them lubed up so that they uh, don't fail on you. So the bottom looks pretty much the same because you kind of put a drop in there. Not as frequently because that bearing doesn't take nearly the load that the top bearing does. So uh, let's get to uh, work taking this thing apart. The first thing you have to do is get the C-clip off. Um, I've had this one off, so it comes off pretty easy. Of course, if you have the proper snap ring pliers, that works the best. But you can use your fingernails or a flathead screwdriver and it'll come right off. Let me get my screwdriver here. Just have to get it out of the groove and then it slides up the shaft. There it goes. So that just comes off. And then, easy as can be, the motor just pulls right apart. So now to get the um, the old bearings out, first take a look at the can here. Um, this question came up on the forums. Uh, just the other day, and I don't know if you can see it in here, but there's what looks like a little bit of, uh, it almost looks like styrofoam or packing foam in between a couple of the magnets, <clears throat> and somebody tried to scrape that off, and that's not, uh, you don't want to do that. That's a putty they use to balance the can. So they put the shaft in, and they spin this thing up to whatever RPM, probably 25,000 RPM, on a balancing machine, find out where it's out of balance, put the putty and balance it. So you don't want to take that off because that's definitely meant to be there. So looking at the shaft, you can see this particular one <clears throat> has got some scoring. We'll clean it up and see how it looks. It does, I don't feel a ridge, it's just a visual right now. So we'll put some scotch right on it and see how it looks. If it looks at all iffy, we'll change the shaft too. No sense putting on a, a good high-end bearing and then putting it onto a bad shaft. All right, well, getting the bearings out. Um, these bearings, I checked them. They aren't really all that bad. I was really religious about oiling them every you know, six or so flights on the top and, and then usually, you know, once a week on the bottom ones, which could be anywhere from, you know, five flights up to 35 flights the way I fly. So I just find a shaft that's small enough to fit through the hole. This is a T-Rex 250 main shaft and then put it in and kind of press against it to hold it against the opposite edge. Give it a little tap and then move it to the other side and give it a little tap and the bearing pops right out. That's the lower bearing there. And now we can actually use a larger shaft to get the top one out. And the top one can sometimes be a little harder to work with just because, as I said, it gets a little more of a load on it. The 450 shaft fits in here good. Actually fit right through there. I'll try it again with the 250 shaft. There it goes. So out it comes. And again you can see there's a fair amount of schmegma from the uh, oiling kit on the inside, which is proof positive that the oil does actually go through the bearing because it wouldn't have any way to get underneath it. So I'm going to clean all this up, clean the bottom up too, and, uh, and then I'll get out um, some tools to put the, uh, put the new bearings in. The 
these, you can use a couple of sockets. Um, the object is you don't want to push on the inner race of the bearing um, right here uh, as you press them into the into the um, into the recesses. Uh, so what you want to do is like this die right here will press on the outside race if you see that. Uh, so that's what we're looking for. So <clears throat> if you don't have a set of these, find yourself a socket that mates up with that. Um, it's better to use a larger drive socket because then you can put a shaft through it just like I'm going to do here. I'm going to put this uh, 450 shaft through and that way as it goes in it, uh, it'll keep it all centered and everything really neat. Make sure that it doesn't, uh, doesn't get askewed is what you want. If it gets tilted at all in there uh, it'll, it'll be wedged in and it'll be awful hard to get out. Um, <clears throat> on some forums I've seen where people use some green Loctite in here I haven't had any need for that. Um, for one thing, this is anodized, and theoretically Loctite won't really work on an anodized surface. Um, so uh, they are really a tight fit, so you shouldn't need Loctite to get them to seal right in there. So we'll, uh, we'll get this all set up in the vise and get the... All right, here we go, guys. Just going to slowly press them in there. Kind of back it out here, and let's pull them out and see how it looks. There we go, all pressed in, nice and tight. So now we'll just reassemble the motor, and then we'll go uh, install it back in the helicopter and go for a test fly. If it's not too windy. All right, there it is, the motor reassembled um, feels smooth as can be um, I'll put a new snap ring they give you a, a new washers in here so I put a new washer on there as well um, I noticed on my motor um, that I'm starting to get a little chafing on my uh, black wire so I'm going to put some extra heat shrink on there and probably some shoe goop to uh, stop that from grounding out against the frame then I'm going to reinstall it and uh, we'll test, uh, we'll put the pinion into the mesh and we'll go fly.